The title of this podcast is Knowing What's Not the Path Keeps Me on the Path or Helps Me Stay on the Path. Uh, a lot of times uh, in my life, I have set a goal or set an intention of where I want to go without knowing the steps that it's going to take to get there, not knowing all of that. But what I do know are the things that won't be helpful to help me get to where I want to go or experience what I want to experience in the present moment. So that is more than enough to help you uh, experience some level of success when it comes to um, whatever you're working on. And in my case of being more and more conscious, being more loving and open hearted is knowing what, what behaviors do not contribute to that end. And I can think of a couple of things along the way uh, that have been easy for me to do. So for example, people that know me, uh, they know that my nutrition is something that uh, I'm intentional about. I'm not obsessive about, I'm just intentional about it. So with that being said is, <clears throat> while when I first became, uh, started eating a vegetarian uh, diet and then a vegan diet, what was clear to me was the things not to eat. Uh, I didn't know what all the vegan recipes were or all the things that I uh, should consider that would give me the protein and the complex carbohydrates and fats that I wanted. I, I didn't know all of that because I didn't go to school for, for uh, I didn't go to get a certificate or a degree in nutrition. But what I was clear on were the foods that I used to eat and that were also available to me that were not going to help me uh, maintain a vegetarian or a vegan uh, diet. I was clear on that. So that was that was a game changer in the early days. The same thing with uh, my pursuit of a degree during the latter half of my, uh, during, during the most recent five or six years, I was really clear about the behavior that was going to increase the likelihood of me getting A's in school versus not getting A's. Um, and what those things were was I knew that staying up late at night, eating poorly, missing workouts and things like that were not going to help me do well in school. So someone may say, well, well, you know, with the workouts, like wouldn't it become secondary uh, for you? And I was like, no, they were part of the grounding. They were part of the foundation that was going to help me do well in school. So I made it a point that no matter how challenging school or work were, that I was going to make sure that the non-negotiable stayed non-negotiable, which were my sleep, my exercise, my nutrition, and working on myself. Those things had to happen as I went about the business of meeting those academic requirements to get a degree. And I've used that every step of the way in my in my life. And when I go out to the pickleball court and I want to have a really great fun experience on the pickleball court, some of the things that I've learned that will help me do that is not letting the weather be a problem for me, whether it's really windy out there or whether we get rained out, not making that a problem, neither which I can change and it's all wasted energy. The other thing that it took me a little bit longer to 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 identify and to begin to work on was who my partner was. And so the way that I got to start working on that was is initially was blaming my partner for not practicing enough or working enough on their game. And then uh, once I worked on myself and started to say, hey, listen, this is not being, me being my best of being critical or blaming someone else. Uh, that stopped being a problem, too. I started to work on being encouraging to my partner. And then if my if my partner or partners wanted to drill, I started to create time in my schedule to drill, which was a benefit to both them and to me. So those are the things that I knew not to do to have a great experience on the pickleball court. In the workplace, 
what I learned to do is not it, workplace and relationships is not to uh, create any more problems than were already present. That was really, really key for me. So for example, uh, if I was uh, being, uh, let's say, I didn't have the kind of a choice and autonomy when I got a new person to I reported up to or manager or physician that I work with, let's say that the ones that I had in the past, which this is true, gave me a lot of choice and autonomy. And then someone new would come in and their leadership style was completely different. It was a lot of delegation and direction and uh, not a lot of opportunity to be creative or to have autonomy. And in those cases, so that was the facts about their leadership style. That's let's 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 say for argument for argument's sake that that's that's a problem. So let's say that's problem number one. Then problem number two would be my inability to handle that. So what I knew was is that if I accepted that this is their leadership style, you know, the, the number one problem number one. If I accepted that this is their leadership style, then the suffering ends there. I just do what they ask me to do. But if I am bothered by it, disturbed by it, unable to handle it, that becomes problem number two. And I know that's not uh, the path that I want to be on. So I know that's not the path to have fulfillment and experience uh, well-being at work. I knew that was clear. And the same thing in relationships. Uh, before I was going to have, I had a problem with something, before I've been talking to my friend about the problem, I want to make sure that it wasn't like it, it wasn't my inability to handle whatever it was that I thought they were doing and not doing. Uh, I want to make sure that if it was something like that, that I worked on it so that didn't become a problem again. So, you know, having somebody do something that hits my stuff inside and I get bothered, then I come bring it to their attention. Now it's hitting their stuff, creating multiple problems. I knew that wasn't a path too. I knew the first thing was acceptance. And if there's a conversation that I felt still needed to take place, and when I say still need to take place, I had to get to the point to whether this other person changed their behavior or not, I would still be okay. And if they didn't change their behavior, it wasn't something that would make me close my heart to them. Now, let's say it's something that is just, you know, uh, just way out there that most normal people would look at and say, hey, this behavior, I just can't support this. While our relationship may come to an end in this shared journey, my my heart would stay open to them, to the humanity in them. And so I can still know that their behavior uh, may not lead me on the path that I want to go, which is helpful because there's two paths. I'm going to take the one that's going to lead to inner peace, to lead, to lead with, that leads to being open-hearted intimately kindness everywhere I go, serving others. And so those are just a couple examples. So in your own life, I encourage you to think about the behavior that you're engaged in, whether your behavior is worrying, being anxious, obsessive thinking, complaining all the time. And what you really want is to be okay inside. You want more joy. You want to experience more inner peace. If that's what your real intention is or what you say you want, then Think about if the behaviors that you're engaged in contribute to that. Think about if those behaviors really make a difference with changing anything. Most recently, I was at, at work and there was someone who was complaining about the pay discrepancy of what her job uh, receives at, at our company versus outside in the marketplace. And, uh, and they just could not get over it. And although the leadership is working to try to, to uh, improve things, they just kept talking about it to everyone that they uh, came across. And they just met me and they were adamant about it. And uh, it was just really, really interesting because I identified the behavior. Because as Keith 1.0, I did it all the time, all the time. And so that's a path that does not lead, with, lead to fulfillment at work. Let's say that the path for this particular person is a pay increase. Well, for the last year and a half that they've been complaining about it, has it produced a pay increase? It has not. So there's always a better way to do things. And you can express that you are interested in a pay, pay increase, but no one's holding you hostage. If you feel like that's not happening or won't happen in on your timeline, 
you're free to move on. We're free agents here in the United States. So you can go somewhere else and work. That's a choice. You don't have to be a victim. So you start to think about this path that I'm going down, this complaining, this blaming, this shaming, all these things, whether to myself or to others, is that helping me get to where I want to go? And in my case, I found that it's not. So I, you know, argue that knowing what's not the path is as helpful as knowing what is the path. 